Hey guys, Jaime here and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I managed to save 80% of my personal income. And I was motivated to create this video today because uh, a few days ago, I read a stat somewhere that basically said that 65% of Americans have less than $1,000 saved. And so saving is definitely a big struggle for a lot of people. And in this video, I'm going to share with you four practical tips that you can use to save money that have worked tremendously well for me. And I'm not talking about saving a few bucks on a Starbucks drink or just leaving incredibly frugal and not actually enjoying life, right? Very sustainable ways of... Uh, um, yeah, saving money so that you can enjoy more financial freedom and potentially even retire earlier and much better. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing that I want you to keep in mind is that it is, of course, easier to save money when you're making more money than when you're making, let's just say, you know, 20K a year, right? Because if you're making 20K a year, the living uh, expenses are already quite high in the US, in the UK, in most of the world, right? And so it's obviously going to be much harder to save money if you're making 20K a year than if you're making you know, 200, 300K a year. And so in my personal opinion, the first thing that you wanna do before even focusing on saving money is making sure that you increase your income. Obviously that is much easier said than done, but that is why I have a lot of videos on my channel where the main focus is just increasing your income. So for example, creating an online business that can yield 10, 20, 30K a month so that you actually have more income and you have the ability to save more. So that is the first thing that you wanna keep in mind and that is without accounting for lifestyle inflation, which is basically if you increase your income, then your lifestyle expenses go up. And in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, how you can actually increase your income and still keep your lifestyle expenses, still keep your, your daily expenses relatively low. So you can actually prep for a much better retirement and actually truly enjoy financial freedom. Because when you're tying yourself to a lot of material things or a lot of things that don't really serve you, but cost you a lot of money, then you know it's no bueno actually increasing your income if that's what's going to happen. So with that being said, there are four ways that I cut on expenses. And these are really the big four, right? Uh, there's obviously a ton of other ways that you can cut on expenses, but I truly believe that if you have these four locked in, right? And you are focused on this four, then it's going to be so much easier. It's almost going to be a butterfly effect where if you have this sorted, then all the different pieces are going to come into place. So the first area that I cut on expenses is commuting. For most people, commuting is such an integral part of their day. They spend one to two hours even just getting to their job. And that is a huge cost of time and the opportunity cost of what you could actually do with those hours but as well as money you're going to have to pay for a car you can finance it or you can buy it but nonetheless it's still a big expense or if you're using the metro or train uh, then you're gonna have to pay for daily tickets right so it actually mounts up to be a lot of uh, money at the end of the month one thing that you can do and one remedy to this massive waste of money is you can either move closer to your employer right so you can move closer to your work so you don't have to commute so many hours and potentially you could even walk to your job or the second thing that you can do is you can ask if you can work from home uh, for a couple of days of the week and uh, the great news is that with the current social landscape and uh, that is becoming more and more normal right and a lot of people are actually working from home and a lot of companies are asking their employees to just work from home uh, fully right but once the situation is back to normal you could also make a case for spending you know two out of the five days uh, of work at home working at home and you could use the argument that that's going to make you a lot more productive because you don't have to spend you know two hours commuting to work every single day and you can put those two hours into your work um, and so that is the first way that I caught on expenses for me personally I run an online business so I just work from home entirely so I don't have to commute to a, a job or waste a lot of time commuting to a job uh, and that's why I'm such a big fan of uh, an online business obviously I recognize that a lot of people who want to make that transition from a nine to five job uh, to an online business still need that nine to have job income to sustain their side hustle but especially in the world we live in right now uh, with you know such a big turn of events uh, where most people are working from home it's never been a better time to start an online business and to make money from the comfort of your home. So that is the first way that I save money. The second way that I save money is on groceries and food. Basically on my phone, you'll never see an Uber Eats app. You'll never see a Postmates app. Um, and the reason for that is number one, if you have the app on your phone, it is way more tempting when you're hungry to just go ahead and order the, the first thing that you see or just some you know really nice looking at Chipotle, right? And so that is a massive temptation that is not really good for your wallet or your health. And so what I do instead is once a week, I do my groceries online, right? And the great thing about doing it once a week is that if something is missing, then I'm gonna wait until next week to have it restocked, right? I'm never really in need of going to the grocery store to get avocados, right? Um, because I know that if I go, I'm gonna be tempted to buy a lot more stuff 
off. And also in my opinion, it's a massive waste of money, right? And so doing my groceries once a week is a, is a life hack that has helped me tremendously. And it pretty much forces me to be healthy because if I'm hungry, there's no other option than to eat the healthy stuff that I order uh, on Monday um, from the grocery store. What I will say on this is that I love food. I love trying out new restaurants. I love going out with my friends uh, to dine out. And I do that quite often. I will do that on Friday nights and on Saturday nights, I will also have a dinner with friends. And those dinners are usually not cheap. Uh, it won't cost me less than you know 30 to even 40 uh, dollars per person. But the, the way I see it is that dinner is much more worth it and it's gonna uh, contribute to my happiness a lot more than just buying something of Uber Eats when I'm you know hungry at you know 10, 10 p.m. at night, right? Uh, that's gonna contribute to my happiness a lot more and it's not gonna be as unhealthy as an Uber Eats. Also, yes, it's expensive and it definitely mounts up at the end of the month, um, but it's predictable, it's a predictable expense. And the very important thing about budgeting is making things predictable. It's just making sure that you have a budget for something. So I can allocate a budget for dining out and trying top restaurants and going out with my friends and I don't feel guilty at all of spending that money. And it's also not gonna surprise me at the end of the month. So that is the second area that I cut expenses on. The third area is rent. Now, currently I'm spending around $5,000 uh, on rent every single month. Uh, and that is quite a lot for most people. Um, but for me, my place, my home uh, is one of the most important aspects of my life because I, I work here, I record here, um, I sleep here, right? I hang out with friends uh, at home. And so it was definitely very important to me to find the right home. And I will probably do a full video on the financial breakdown of my uh, home as well as maybe a little house tour if you guys are interested in that for those of you who are sub to my channel. Um, but essentially, I spend around $5,000 every single month on rent. Now, currently I'm making around forty to even $45,000 a profit every single month. So in terms of percentages, I'm spending around 12.5% on rent, which is not huge. Um, I could definitely spend way more, but as a general rule of thumb, I would never be uh, comfortable spending more than 15 to 20% on rent. Um, I know that most people spend you know, 30, 40, even 50% on their rent. And that, in my opinion, is not a very financially responsible decision. So ideally get your income to a point where you're spending less than 20% on your rent. The one thing that I will say on, on this point is that when I started my business, I literally, you know, I was living in London with, uh, with a few friends. I descaled everything. I literally decided to take a step back, moving with my parents, and literally spent almost a whole year uh, at my parents' house. And I got to the point where I was making 25 to even 30K a month profit, and I was still living uh, with them. And that's because I was focused on growing my business. So I wanted to be frugal. I wanted to reinvest back into my business. And also the process of renting a really nice home uh, as a 21 year old. Uh, in Madrid was a, a pretty uh, tough process for me. But my point here is if you're young and you are looking to start a business or if you're looking to turn your financial situation around, do not be afraid of descaling things back, literally taking a step backwards in the eyes of society, moving back in with your parents or sharing an apartment with a bunch of other people. Because in my opinion, that's really what it takes to uh, turn things around, especially because if you're looking to start a business, you don't want a lot of expenses because that way you can just reinvest back into whatever you're doing to grow your income. So that is the third area uh, that I recommend you cut expenses on. And my opinion, uh, when it comes to moving in back with your parents and descaling back uh, in your expenses to really turn things around and uh, take your income to a whole new level. The fourth and final area where I recommend you cut expenses is clothing. For uh, a lot of people, that is a massive, massive expense. And the way I see clothing, I, I love fashion, right? Um, but I'm not a big trends guy, right? I'm never gonna buy something that is just a trend um, and that is gonna be out of trend, that, that is gonna be out of fashion in the next six months, right? What I like to do is I like to buy timeless pieces and also pieces that sure, they are more expensive than your regular Sarah or H&M and these stores are great for something, right? But if I'm looking to buy an, a new coat or a new sweater or a new hoodie, I'm gonna spend more money on those pieces because I want them to be timeless. I want them to be really high quality. And number three, which is something that a lot of people don't consider, I want to love that piece. I'm never going to buy something that I'm not obsessed with or that I 100% like, right? Um, and I feel like a lot of people just buy something that, you know, they see once, right? And they're like, oh, that could look cool. Uh, they just go ahead and buy it. And then it kind of just piles up. Um, I'm sure it's maybe a $20 t-shirt, but it really mounts up, um, especially if you don't use it. So that is my take on clothing. I go ahead and buy timeless pieces, pieces that are high quality, that are sure more expensive, but that I'm gonna absolutely love and wear a lot. The other reason why I don't buy a lot of clothes, and this is more on the productivity side of things, uh, which is something that I'm completely obsessed with as an entrepreneur, um, is the fact that if you have a lot of clothes, then you fall into decision fatigue, which basically leads to the depletion of your willpower 
while choosing the clothes that you want to wear for today, right? And so me personally, I never want to spend that much energy on such a trivial decision. Um, and basically I have like three to four a set of clothes that I always, always wear. Basically three different outfits that I basically switch uh, in and out of. Uh, and uh, this is obviously when I'm working, if I'm going out, yes, I'm gonna you know take more time and, and uh, actually think of the clothes that I wear. But if it's literally only for my day-to-day -day task, like jumping on client calls and jumping on student calls and jumping on sales calls uh, and recording videos uh, and doing deep focus work, uh, then I don't really need to, uh, to uh, wear too many fancy clothes. So that is my take on the clothing and that is the fourth way that I caught on expenses. And that is that for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did drop a massive thumbs up, it will help start a ton with the algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below in the comments any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check those out. If you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship, personal finance, uh, social media marketing agency and a ton of other really, really cool topics. Uh, so go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And uh, the final thing is if you want to join an incredible community full of like-minded entrepreneurs interested in leveling up their income and achieving financial location and time frame, go ahead and check out the link in the description. That is a link to my free Facebook group, Mastermind. Um, go ahead and apply and if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.